This episode of Techzilla is sponsored by ShareFile by Citrix. We love taking pictures. So in honor of National Photography Month, as approved by Congress in 1987, we thought we'd do some photography segments, starting with our top five tricks for better cell phone pics, because hey, most of us are using the cameras in our cell phones a lot more than we're using dedicated digital cameras. Uh, so true. So number five, start with the simple stuff. Clean the lens off once in a while. If your <laughs> cell phone gives you the ability to tweak your camera settings, use maximum resolution, max quality, minimal compression for your cell phone's image sensor. Yeah, the yeah. photo data that has been lost cannot be restored no matter what that cool app you downloaded tells you. Number four, the longer, I'm, this is apparently me pointing at fingers day, number four, the longer I use a cell phone camera, the more I try to avoid using the flash. They're not as powerful as you might think they are. Try having somebody stand three feet, six feet, nine feet, 12 feet, 15 feet from your phone at night. Take pictures, look at the results. By the way, a lot of cell phone flashes have major fall off. That means they're often too bright, or, you know, very bright to too bright in the center, especially in close ups. Then they get very dark in the corners. Then there's the whole flash reflections on glasses, windows, display cases. I could go on and on and on. I mean, it's great. Like I end up looking like a ghost in all my friends' pictures. Well, you're also so fair skinned. Jeez. <laughs> well, yeah, and then like the bright flash in the center oh, and terrible. the darkness in the corners. Experiment before you have the one of a like yes. the, the one time ever shot. Does that make sense? It does. <laughs> also, another thing you can try is number three, try a third party photo app. There's plenty of them out there, especially on Android. Our producer, Michael, loves the new Google Camera app. You can download it for free over at Google Play Store. And on iOS, there's also Camera Plus. It's super fast and it offers a ton of features to play with. There are literally dozens and dozens of options. There's probably hundreds now. So just, you know, try a few. See which one's your favorite. Number two, learn how to keep it still. The worst way to take a photo, a, a, a photo, a photography. Is when you're drunk. Yeah, and you're holding it out like this, or even when you're stone sober. I got this, bro. Yeah, and notice her hands waving around like a flag in the breeze. Do not hold your camera at arm's length in one hand, especially at night. Use both hands, thumb and finger, close to the body. Brace your elbows, bring your elbows in, brace them on your rib cage, and try not to breathe for a moment. Close to your body, um, and if you can, Set your camera on something, especially at night, and take that picture with a super stable platform. Like your head. Not so stable. Actually, you know what my favorite thing is? Leaning <laughs> against a wall or a pole yes. or a stop sign yes. or a street light or a car or the edge of the car Absolutely. or the window of the car. Stable platform, much better picture. Because the other thing I've noticed is a lot of times, especially on the super small iPhone screen, I won't notice a picture is blurry until I get it on my desktop. Yep. And then I get pissed. <laughs> What's number one, sir? Get closer. Don't crop your daughter's head out of the picture or cut the top off the mountain. But generally speaking, way too many cell phone photos are a tiny person, dog, soccer player, widget, whatever, surrounded by too much sky, grass, Jeez. playing field, display case. I mean, this would be ridiculous yes. unless you're trying to get a shot of my eyeball. But get closer, which, by the way, brings me to my favorite. This is a bonus tip. Number zero, move around. If it's a kid, get down to their level. Or, or if it's somebody really tall, get up to their level. Or if you're trying to film a birdhouse, see if there's something you can climb up on. It doesn't work for sports, sure, but for stuff that isn't moving so much, lots of different shots from lots of angles, and just take all the pictures. Storage is cheap. I really like how uh, Bob Cooey put it on photosecrets.com in the best photo tip I ever got. Quote, the subject you wish to photograph is the nucleus of an atom. You, the photographer, are the electron spinning around the subject until you find just the right angle and distance. Not until then will you have successfully evaluated every aspect of that subject and its possibilities. He added just the slightest move to the right or left, up or down, has the potential to make or break the photo. Don't be in such a hurry to finish and leave. And since I can't stop talking, do me a favor, <sighs> unless you just want the outline of Shannon, don't take a picture with the sun right behind her. No. <laughs> and if you do, turn on the flash and get close to the flash will illuminate her In face. that case, flash is good. Yeah. And hey, keep a spare battery. You can swap in or an external battery that you can charge your phone with because on these days when you're taking like eight zillion shots, you need a spare battery. And you will run out of, of phone battery a minute before your child does the cutest thing ever. Of course. Oh my goodness. By the way, Lori Grunin is going to be on in a week or two at Camera Recommendations. If you've got questions about buying a new digital camera or a photo tip you want to share with us, tweet them at Tagzilla or email Tagzilla at revision3.com and we will do our best to get them answered and to share them with the rest of the audience. Coming up on Tagzilla, we got more for you, but first we got a word from our sponsor. 
Most of us rely on email to communicate with our clients and our coworkers, and we're frequently exchanging files like contracts and spreadsheets and presentations. But if you're sending these important or confidential documents as regular email attachments, you need to know about a better way, like ShareFile by Citrix. Instead of attachments, ShareFile sends your documents as secure links. You can quickly send files of almost any size, control who has access and for how long, and receive email alerts when files are opened and reviewed. Plus, ShareFile is easy to use and will help you work more efficiently. Keep everyone on the same page with shared folders that sync automatically. You can also access files from anywhere using your computer or your mobile device. We rely on ShareFile like millions of other professionals. We use it to pass around video files and assets since we're not always in the office. You can sign up today with our 30-day free trial, no obligation. Go to ShareFile.com, click the microphone at the top of the homepage, and enter Techzilla. Remember, visit ShareFile.com and type in Techzilla.